Hello students, uh, welcome uh, to the class 12 standard lecture. My son, Dr. Chandama Vagis, Department of Economics, SVKM, MJ College, Jalga. Uh, today, we are going to chart the first lecture of the economics, the first lesson of 12 standards, the introduction to microeconomics and macroeconomics chapter one. Students, you, you have already studied the concept of microeconomics in last lesson. Uh, the meaning, the definition, the economic system, different concept and different economists in the first lesson of 11th standard. Now, you are going to study in briefly about the microeconomic and macroeconomic uh, e topics. Now, lastly, we studied about the economics is divided into two. That is microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics means it is a term derived from the Greek word micros, which means small or a millionth part. In the same way, macroeconomics uh, is derived from the Greek word macros, M-A-K-R-O-S, which means large. This term was coined by the Norwegian economist Ragnar Prince of Oslo University in the year 1933. Now, when we talk about uh, Ragnar French, he is an economist who got the Nobel Prize in 1969 and he studied briefly about the different aspects of economics and he came into the conclusion that microeconomics and macroeconomics are taken differently and we have to study differently as to get a successful part in the economy and the development of economy. So, microeconomics and macroeconomics are the two division of economics in which we study about the small and large part of the economy separately. Anything when we study, there is a history behind everything. So what is the history behind of microeconomics? We are going to discuss about what is the history behind microeconomics. The origin of microeconomics is tracked back to the era of classical economists, classical and neoclassical. During the economic period, the classes, the economists are divided as classical economics and neoclassical economists. Both the classical and neoclassical economists have studied about the microeconomy. When we study about the classical economists, Adam Smith, David Ricardo and J.S. Mill, they have taken these aspects in a separate manner and put forth to the economy, to the nations. After that, the neoclassical economists popularized uh, this concept into a very large in that uh, the architect of economics, Dr. Alfred Marshall in his book, Principle of Economics published in 19, uh, sorry, 1819 has given a much aspects about the microeconomics. Likewise, Professor Pigou, J.R. Hicks, Professor Samuelson, Mrs. Jonah Robinson, etc. have also contributed to the development of microeconomics. Thus, when we go back to the history of microeconomics, we can see the different economies. In the same way, the historical review of the mi macroeconomics. Macroeconomics, we, we know that we are studying the large aspects of the economy, the economy as a whole. In 16th and 17th century, the mercantilist, mercantilist means who, who the, the merchants, in the European merchants advocated the policy of macroeconomics to the government. After that, classical economists Adam Smith, Ricardo, Professor J.S. will discuss and determinants of national income and wealth. Uh, when we study most uh, elaborately, the credit to the macroeconomics goes to Lord J.M. Keynes. Keynes has given a great contribution to the uh, macroeconomic theory in his book General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money in 1936. Kane used the macroeconomic approach to analyze the economic problems, the credit for the development of the macroeconomics approach goes to Keynes. Why? Because he has given 
the theory, the, the theory uh, to improve the economy from the Great Depression in 1930s. We all are familiar with the today's conditions, the country going, how the disease has spread and we are uh, means already based uh, to close down many of the aspects of the economy, the production, the distribution, many of the things are closed down now. Likewise, in the period of 1930, during after the First World War, there was a spread of disease that time also. The, in that time, the economy was collapsed and the economy has gone to great depression of 1930s. During this period, the Keynes theory of employment and different aspects to improve the economy, the macroeconomic studies he has did elaborately and he has put forth the theory and he has brought up the economy into a successful running. Now, we have studied, now we are going to study about the definition uh, of microeconomics. Along with the definition, today we will be discussed about the scope also. So, today's lecture, we will discuss mostly about the definitions and scope of microeconomics. When we come to the definition, we can learn about two economists. We are going to concentrate the definition of two economists. Among the two economists, one is Maurice Job. He has put forth that microeconomics is in fact the microscopic study of the economy. Microscopic study. What do you mean by the microscopic study? Microscopic study means when we see through a microscope, we can see different cells very clearly, different aspects, different cells very clearly. So microeconomics also is in the same way. It studies about the economy. When we take into consideration the economy as a whole, a single each part we are studying in economics, we are studying about the each part. So Morris Dobb's definition is concentrated that microeconomics in fact is the microscopic study of economy. Next definition is given by Professor A.P. Lerner. According to A.P. Lerner, microeconomic consists of looking at the economy through a microscopic as it were to see how the millions of the cell of the body of the economy, the individuals or the households as a consumer and individuals or firm as a producers play their role, their part in working of the whole economic organism. Let me explain it once more. Microeconomic consists of looking at the economy. We are looking at the economy through a microscope. Microscopic approach. In the before also we consider the definition. It is a microscopic study. AP Learner also is saying that microeconomics consists of looking at the economy through a microscope as it were to see how the million cell, millions of cells in the body of the economy. What are the millions of cells? In the economy, the production unit is controlled by two percent production and consumption units. That is individuals as a outsource. They are the consumer. Individuals as a firm, the producer. So these individuals as a consumer and a producer play their part in the working of the whole economic organism. So this is the part. Now there is a chart given, given in the uh, frame. Uh, in the presentation there is a chart scope of microeconomics. Now what, when we study about the scope of microeconomics, it is clearly given in the chart that the microeconomics is divided into three parts. What are the three parts? First, theory of product pricing, theory of factor pricing, theory of economic welfare. In the chart it is given, microeconomics is divided into three, that is theory of product pricing, theory of factor pricing and theory of economic welfare. We can see in the chart, in the theory of product pricing, there is demand analysis and supply analysis. Product, the price of the product is decided by the combined force of demand and supply. The price of individual commodity is determined by the market force of demand and supply. Microeconomics is confirmed with the demand analysis, means individual demand and individual supply. So between there is a force, this force interact with each other and the price is decided. So we say that theory of product pricing. Next, 
theory of factor pricing in the lesson uh, last 11th standard first lesson elaborately we have studied about the factors how the factors are priced what are the factors of production in microeconomics in microeconomics the factors of production are land labor capital and organization we can say entrepreneur organization as entrepreneur now land we can see in the chart given in the presentation that we can see rent return it here. so what is this rent rent is a reward for the land wages is the reward for the labor interest is the reward for the capital and profit is the reward for the entrepreneur means the price it is the price given to the factors of production so it is mentioned as theory of factor pricing next we will come the theory of economic welfare now what is theory of economic welfare the theory of economic welfare basically deals with the efficiency in the allocation of resources efficiency in allocating the resources how are the resources allocated for example we have something in our hand we have a uh, we have some money with us or we have some product with us how we are using that in a proper way that is allocating the resources that mainly efficiency in allocation resources is attained when the result of maximization satisfaction of the people that is economic efficiency includes three efficiencies economic efficiency for the welfare of the people efficiency is essential and there are three efficiency what are the three efficiency see in the chart it is given efficiency in production efficiency in consumption overall efficiency now efficiency in production means what efficiency in production means producing maximum possible amount of goods and services from the given amount of resources what is efficiency in production producing maximum things from the given amount how can you consider it how can you produce the maximum maximum things with the given resources efficiency in production we say maximum possible amount of goods for example you are studying you are having only two hours before the exam you are going to study now how you will study it how you can get maximum satisfaction you will take the main important points and you will study and you will go back in the same way within the little resources which you are you are producing more things that is efficiency that efficiency in production now what is efficiency in consumption efficiency in consumption means distribution of produced goods and services among the people for consumption in such a way as to maximize the satisfaction of the society so consumption means you are consuming the things for the maximum satisfaction you are not just going and purchasing this and that and everything it is not like that you are going to consume in an efficient manner where you can get a maximum satisfaction in it, what you are doing or overall economic efficiency means production of those goods which are most desired by the people the economy desires some of the things the essential things we know the basic needs of the people food clothing and shelter so these are the basic needs of the economy so when we produce overall efficiency we are discussing overall efficiency when we produce these things in a very proper manner for the essentiality of the people then we can say overall efficiency it means with what goods are needed by the people we are producing that and this thus the focus of microeconomics is mainly conformed to price theory and resource allocation it does not only study about the aggregate rating the whole but the part it is saying so microeconomics is always concentrated in the part of the economics now when we just recall what we studied today we studied about the introduction of economics in the introduction we studied economics divided into two main branch then the historical background of microeconomics different economics we studied then we studied about the macroeconomics and we studied two definitions by 
Morais Job, an AP learner. Then we study about the scope of the economics. So students, today we uh, conclude this uh, lecture by the scope only. Now what you have to do for the assignment is that you have to study the definitions and this scope, the chart just you have to recognize it. In next lecture, I will be discussing you with the features and importance of macroeconomics and I will give the assignment in the next lecture. Thank you.